Well, today we're going to talk about what it means to leave a spiritual legacy to our children. You know, how do we engage with our children about the importance of not just knowing information about God, but really knowing God. And I'm so thankful to be here again with my dad. And uh, dad, talk to us a little bit about what you and mom did in the journey of raising us. You're busy pastors, busy ministers, lots going on in life. Uh, how, how did you help us with this? Well, we both grew up in farms and farm family, large families. And my wife and I determined that we would make a normal family life alongside of our ministry involvement. We never kept our kids from involvement in ministry. We kind of did it as a family. But we made sure we had lots of normal, fun family time so they would see us working for, for and with God, but would experience us living with God as a family. There was moments often at nighttime, the, the kids would say, Dad, can you cut up an apple and bring it up to us? I still have apples to this day. <laughs> can you give me a rub back, Dad? Yeah. And when I would get home late, for maybe 9, 10, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, they'd still be waiting for the apple and the rub back and the conversation and the good night the prayer time. I think it was important to be real in, in our relationships so that we don't make, make it complicated for the children in their encountering of God. Yeah, that's, that's what I learned. And we, my wife and I brought into our family, we, we call it uh, making God available and real in the regular rhythm of our life. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of having the pressure of feeling like, you know, we have to have these long Bible studies with our families and our kids and, and disciple them, although those are good things to do, we wanted uh, our children to just see God at work in the regular mm -hmm. rhythm. Mm -hmm. So we took that from the Shema in Deuteronomy, where Moses is saying, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and teach them everything that I've told you you know, tell them when you're on the road, when you're at home, when you're lying in bed, when you're getting up. So we call that drive time, go time, meal time, bedtime. That's good. <laughs> where it's just, you know, in the, in the regular things of life, we're talking about God and, and where we see God and, and just make it normal. And that's what I saw you and mom do, that just God was just, it's normal for God to be part of your life and part of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so critical. It was part of my growing up. My dad was a farmer and was a deacon in the church, but he and mom lived their life led by the Spirit. And I would see him praying for people in a corner store as an encounter somebody he knew. It was, it was just normal life, spiritual life. Yeah, and it's not that we have to do it perfectly or know everything about the Bible in order to do that. Yeah. I think some of the, the most powerful moments is is the transparent moments mm -hmm. as a father to just say, yeah, here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what I'm working through. Here's what I'm praying about. Here's what I'm thinking about. And then thinking that through with your children and growing together. There's something about mm -hmm. that growing together that's just absolutely powerful. I think that, Dad, I'm, I'm so thankful how you pass that naturally supernatural uh, mm. life on to us, and uh, I'm thankful we've had the opportunity to pass that to It's important not to be religious, yeah, but to be relational with Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Dad.